Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We're here. We made it. We I know. It. I wanted to get on your live, but there was no way. Between my niece, my daughter, my mom, oh, the yeah. dogs. <laughs> I was like, I, <laughs> I was like, I'm hey. not doing this. Chaotic. No chaotic. one needs to see my life like this. <laughs> it's too much. Crazy. Craziness. Craziness. Yeah. Um, but we made it. We're in the new year. Sorry for the delay on this episode, you guys. I'm going to have to do a lot of sexual favors to get this produced ASAP because, <laughs> um, yeah, because <laughs> we're, we're recording this Wednesday and we want to get it out as soon as possible. And that just means that, yeah, it's a whole. It's the holidays. What can we say? What what I won't do for you guys. <laughs> to yes. make sure we get this episode out this episode out so i fell again i was gonna say you just remember, i was gonna bring that up like you hurt yourself i again a week like a week later after the last time i fell and i was going to see my sponsee last time and this time i was actually going to my aa meeting and i had just parked on the curb like against the curb gotten out of the driver's side i parked on the, you know the right side whatever got out and i'm walking up the, to the sidewalk and you know up the curb right and i was gonna step over to the curb but it was you know eight o'clock at night or seven o'clock at night and it's dark and it's cold and it was icy and i slipped on the ice and she i was fell. sober everyone she was sober she's completely She's-, she's- <laughs> sober yeah um the ice was I- crazy the weather yes because it was like i'm wearing shorts and t-shirt today mm-hmm. that i've been in all day um, and I actually left the house. I had several things outside of the house. <laughs> Let me clarify that. Um, so yeah, I slipped and I fell and I sensed that I was falling because I do it all the time. And I just kind of, I know like generally how to let myself fall to land on my ass. And, um, I used my right arm to catch myself, which is my arm, my shoulder that has been surgically repaired three times. So I ended up falling on it and it hurt a lot, like really bad that night, but I couldn't tell what, you know, if it was like hurt, hurt, or just like hurt, you know? And then, yeah. So the next day it was better. And it, as the days progressed, the site of the pain, like kept getting smaller and it kept localizing to like very specific muscle and very specific movements. So that was good. It was progressing in the right direction, but I was concerned about the amount of pain I was having when it would activate. Um, so, cause I would forget about it and, because it didn't bother me, but then I would move my arm a certain way and it would like, I would scream out in pain. Um, but I saw my, yeah, I was, I was fucking miserable. I had to wear a sling for a couple of days. It was just a mess, you guys. So um, then I, um, yeah, so I saw my surgeon yesterday um they they got me in they were able to get me in yesterday and um they looked at the x-rays and stuff everything looks fine nothing's out of place based on the exam she said everything's fine nothing's torn nothing's ripped apparently it was possible that one of the bicep muscles or tendons in my in this area like that bicep area i don't know Mm -hmm. right here Mm -hmm. um like if one of them tore they wouldn't do anything about it anyway because I have this other one here. Oh, interesting. So she doesn't think that I did tear mm-hmm. in either one of them, but even if I was, that was like there's nothing they, they can do. do. It's yeah, not, yeah, because it's it's kind of just an extra, and mm-hmm. then it just kind of like I've got all kinds of parts in there because I had to have my bicep re- when I had the whole first surgery and stuff. You know, I had the I had my bicep repaired. And then eventually, you know, then they did the, the, the rotator cuff reconstruction and then that failed. And so they just, they put in the fake shoulder, but they left like the rotator cuff stuff in there. Mm-hmm. So God only knows what, like, I don't have a rotator cuff, but it's like in there. So weird. You're like a robot. I am. I am. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, all of, well, yeah, I was drunk when I was hit by the car. So <laughs> it wasn't completely a sober injury on that caused all that, but, um, yeah, there's a reason I need to get Wait, sober. the car hit you like walking yes. or I was a pedestrian. Yes. Oh my gosh. I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah. I was, wa- I was walking across the street to a bar. <laughs> uh-huh not in the crosswalk is the whole thing yeah and i'm just yeah. <laughs> and then yeah i got hit and then i fell and then i bounced back up and i was like oh i'm fine because we bounce or when we're really drunk we just bounce <laughs> <laughs> and then i went into the bar and stuff and then i was like oh this is kind of it's kind of sore maybe i should go home <laughs> yeah and it, was, uh, and it was two years before i got anything done with it because i didn't really like it bothered me but not enough to like go and deal with it because i could still function complete like pretty well 
Yeah. And as it turns out, they like didn't know how I was compensating because based on the MRI, it, I shouldn't have been able to move my arm. <laughs> oh, wow. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know, but um, whatever. It is what it is. <laughs> you yeah, know. you look a lot better. You're able to <laughs> lift you. your arm like slightly. Thank you. I um, I was able to do the rowing machine today at the gym. Good. Um, which was good because it didn't bother either the original shoulder like repair or the um the recent fall. Um, and my I saw my physical therapist today too, and she was like you know, she told me certain exercises that I should do. And, mm -hmm. you know, so I was like completely sanctioned to be doing stuff. <laughs> you know, she told me, you know, focus on this versus focusing on that and try not to do as much this. And obviously, you know, if pain, if there's sharp shooting pain, you know, don't do it. Don't do you know, it. Yeah. Stop. So yeah, between my surgeon yesterday and my physical therapist today, I've been given the all clear to be in the Good. gym. So excellent. I did that today. Um, but anyway, enough about me. <laughs> was it packed 2023 goals, everyone in the gym? You know, it was, I think it was only busy because of the time of day it was. Cause I mm -hmm. went like after school work time, mm -hmm. I went like four, five, yeah. four to five and, and it's right next to a high school. Mm. Um, so like there's, there's, you know, teenagers there and stuff, of course, everybody getting off school, off work, whatever. Um, you know, so it was busy in that regard, but it was still plenty of room. Like it was it's a big club. So, um, it's not nice, bad, you know? Yeah. Get it. And they have like massage chairs and stuff. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. Ooh, that is yeah. cool. Like a hydro massage table and stuff like that. So I would just go to get the massage mm -hmm. and just leave, take a shower, <laughs> sit, in <the laughs> rain, sit in the sauna. <laughs> they have a yeah. low budget then, spa day. <laughs> yeah. Right. They have some, um, like red light, something therapy. Booth. Yeah, where you like stand in it and do, I don't know, something. I, I haven't looked at it a lot, but I think it's like the infrared sauna technology, like our sauna blankets that oh, we have. Oh, okay. From um, higher dose. Higher dose, yes. Our big old sauna blankets. Mm -hmm. Um, And anyway, um, yeah. So how's your new year? How's your was new year starting off treating you right? Good, just relaxing, working, relaxing. Yeah. You know, trying to decompress still from yeah. school. So yeah. <laughs> just taking a, taking some time off, a little mental break. Yeah, I love how your time off it still includes working. I know. You know you're like, oh, yeah. I'm still working. You know? I'm doing and one job instead of three. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And um, are you getting to see like Kaya a little bit more since you're not oh, like, in class? You know, yes. I mean, and you know, she just turned two. On yes, happy January birthday, 1st. Kaya! I want yeah. you to tell me about her birthday. It was so nice. Um, last year on her birthday, her first birthday, we both had COVID and 104 fevers. So this year, uh, it was just right after Christmas, January first, obviously. Yeah. Um, Kaya's a New Year's baby. Yeah, and she doesn't have any like very many friends yet because she's not in daycare. So I was like, I don't want to do a big two. party. Right. <laughs> I'm like, let's just do a little family thing. So that's what we did. A little family get together with Kate. Right. Well, that's and... her friend. That's, that's her world right now. Her, mm -hmm. her cousin and, you know, and her aunts and uncle. Yeah. So it was fun. Went to the party. It was beautiful. Grandpa. Beautiful day. Yeah. And her cake was so cute. Yeah. And then the, <laughs> the, the poor drunk unicorn cake the next day. <laughs> <laughs> I got to post that. I've been meaning to post that cake. Oh my God. So the cake was a unicorn cake, right? So there was like a face on it. Yeah. And the cake was only half eaten. So you took it to work. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell the story? <laughs> yeah, I took it to work. And like, it looks like it has fake eyelashes on it. They're beautiful. Well, of course I've been like handling it and the lid pops off or whatever. So the eyelashes look like they're completely smushed. The makeup look like what would be makeup on a unicorn is like smush. So she looks like somebody that's gone out, had a rough night drinking, <laughs> fell asleep in her... Fell asleep in the makeup and then woke up with like eyelashes like hanging off, hanging off her face. Yeah. It just oh my god! It was like unicorn Barbie had a rough New Year's Eve. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh god, that was hilarious. So I can't believe. Yeah, Kaya is two, and yes. she knows all the sister wives' names. She does. It's very actually like I'm embarrassed that she does, but at the same time, it's funny because obviously. You know, you usually, like, I have like to she's do... not awake when you watch it, are is she? No, I usually watch it at least once while we're doing stuff because I have to like 
yeah just get it in and then i'll watch it again and take notes <laughs> mm-hmm. for the you know for Same. the podcast but um i didn't think she was absorbing as much as she was by it being on in the background um she loves the beginning where you know they have the music and oh she stares uh, mm-hmm. she's really good at saying cody and robin's names which is a little terrifying for me out of all of them i'm like <laughs> oh, why does she know their names more than anyone well, and kaya is very special in this regard right like her her whatever skill set her cognitive yeah. load whatever she's got going on like she's i mean i'm not saying she's like a child prodigy but she, there's something about oh, yeah. her you know yeah <laughs> i mean you say she's it two. bragging no she's literally I, two and she knows her alphabet and she can count to 10 and knows all of her colors yeah and she just turned two so like yeah. i have to balance out education with complete trash tv <laughs> same same you gotta I spend all day writing legal briefs and then i come all night and yeah. watch trash tv it's all ego baby you it's know? all ego baby yeah it's all ego a oh, holy shit <laughs> i gotta so, make a meme too that that sparked a meme in me but i just haven't had the haven't energy done it yet yeah. yeah um this episode is so we're still on our sister wives um episode 16 um this is the one-on-one part two and so this is just a continuation there's going to be one more part of it as well um first things first um now when, when we covered 90 day and you know spent so many years doing that the comments were always about what a terrible host sean robinson is for the tell-alls and my defense of that is always she's a character as much as anybody else on the show is. She's got a script to read. She's she's not asking the hard hitting questions because TLC gives her the questions to ask. Like the she producers are literally in her ear. Literally, she has an earpiece. In yeah, her, and they're literally yeah. mm-hmm. in that moment so telling them what to say next. Right. So uh, they don't have as much control. I mean, they're have, like you like said the ability. Yeah. <laughs> to yeah. say to ask those questions. So. We need like a judge. We need like a judge Judy or we need somebody that's like hard hitting that watches the show that won't listen to producers. That's just going to go at it, but and do their own thing. So, yeah. so, so naturally when I first started to see some, some Suki hate after the first part of the tell all, I kind of ignored it, put it in the same classification, even though I think that on sister wives, they are a little bit more themselves and it's less producer handed yeah i agree um so so while there's clearly producer plant stuff in there you it i think you get more of a a natural you're seeing their what they're really doing versus doing what producers tell them to do right and And we're not seeing i mean of course they edit it so like the parts with cody not wanting to answer questions things like that we don't know what else was said, how long that went on, right? things like that. And so she was probably wanting to just get as much out of him as she could without rocking the boat too much. Some is better than none, I feel like, in that yeah, situation. Yeah, what I didn't like about her, this, so 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 the, after the first episode of it, I was like, I'm, no, no, she's she's got, you know, she's got things that, she, you know, she's got guidance. She's, you know, she may have a little bit more free reign than um, Sean Robinson does, but I, I feel like still she, you know, she she was on a tether, as they, yeah. as they would say on Love After Lockup. Um, so then the second episode, I was like, all right, you know, for the most part, I chalk it up, chalked it up to like the editing. We don't know what else was asked, what else was said, what Suki might have asked as a follow up, what they're saving, how they're going to put it all piece it all together. And, you know, that's exactly what I chalked it up to. But what I got mad about was the this narrative, this topic, which is one of the topics that they discussed was this whole was Cody going to re- reconcile with Mary, except that Christine fucked it all up <laughs> narrative. Right. Yeah. I got really mad about this. And the reason I got mad is because when Cody said that about re- he was going to re- reconcile with Mary, that's not the words that he used. He didn't say he was going to reconcile. He says that, which first of all, I didn't, I don't believe him that he thought yeah. this second right. of all, if if he did actually think this, what I think he, you know, what he would have, what he said was, um, he thought 
for a second about maybe thinking about reconciling and I that agree. is vastly different from saying i was going to reconcile i i had made the decision i was going to reconcile with mary that is completely far and apart far off from oh maybe maybe reconciliation might not be something that i won't maybe not consider you know yeah which is basically what it, what he said so there was no oh it's gonna reconcile and then christine flipped her shit which we agree was is not something that happened um and because she flipped her shit i didn't reconcile with mary he keeps trying he kind of is putting forward that narrative he's kind of saying that and she goes along with that like mm -hmm. she i said she plays this game of telephone where she's perpetuating that lie so he says i was gonna reconcile with her but then didn't it? and and what suki should have done was that well you know okay or whatever just said maybe okay just let him say his piece or call him out on it and say wait you didn't say you were going to reconcile with her but if she didn't want to split hairs that's fine mm -hmm. she could have just you know let him say what he was going to say instead she perpetuates the lie by saying well you are going to reconcile she accepts that yeah. as 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 what was something that actually happened that could have been producer influence too it could have been um but i was just like you know she well, was also she does was... she oh, sorry go ahead <laughs> jinx do you think she even watches the show like i know sean does watch the show does do you think that she actually watches or do you think she's she seems kinda... like she does okay. you know she at least yeah. watched watch the seasons i would think i mean yeah I assume any good host is going to, you know, but, yeah. um, but she did miss. So what I didn't like about it in from like an interview standpoint, right. Is, is like, she's trying to interview him and ask him these questions, but she completely mischaracterized what he said. Right. And if she's going to ask him about something he said, she, she should be saying say the right thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and I feel like that's why I was like, oh my God, why is she team Cody? Like, that's I don't think I she's team Cody. I think it's producers wanting to stir some stuff up by trying to make it seem like something it wasn't to then get a different response. I don't know. And, and I feel like on this so far, we haven't had a lot of that. Like yeah, that we know of. Yeah. Well, yeah, that we know of. We know we often see Janelle, they put Janelle and she's like the voice of reason. Reason. <laughs> on, yeah. Right. Like she calls these things out. She articulates all of this stuff really well when there's a mischaracterization or when there's you know she'll she'll explain it you know mm -hmm. she, you, i think it was kind of unfair for you know robin to say that but i think christine mischaracterized what robin said you know so she explains these miscommunications and she explains these things well and i was expecting that from suki and we didn't get it we got her perpetuating the same lie yeah. that cody said which isn't what he actually said he yeah. later said something different and then she takes it and runs with it. So I didn't like that. Mm -hmm. That's why I didn't like Suki on this one, but I'm willing to give her the benefit of the doubt. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. On it. So on that topic, so we had several topics that were discussed during this, this part of the tell all and this whole reconciling with Mary, but Christine fucked it all up. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> like they, take everyone this knows that he's not ever going to reconcile with Mary. I don't care whatever, how good those damn rice crispy treats were. Okay. Right. There is and, no way. And whatever this this thing that that Cody says, Christine, how Christine reacted, and Christine's like, no, that's not true. I would never say that. I think it'd be great if they reconciled. Yeah. So I don't believe that that is something that happened. But they're playing this game of which, and they they spend endless amounts of time. All of the characters, all of the people, talking about this. Would he have reconciled? But for Christine saying, "No, I don't want you to." <laughs> yeah it was a waste of time i felt like this part of the tell all like part two was kind of boring compared to yeah. the yeah. first one i'm like okay they're they're taking this too far okay this is you know blah 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 is what i heard <laughs> yeah what on that same topic though mary um kind of was like you know he's never indicated that he wants to reconcile like no that's that the first doesn't... time i've heard that <laughs> um Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. She was talking to seeing and hearing some of what Cody has said that she had seen before. And that's like the whole, where he doesn't want a relationship and you know, um, with her 
but I think that's... the man can't even look at her. Like he can't even make eye contact with her. Yeah, he walks right by her without even saying anything to her. So yeah, um, so she's saying, you know, well, that's the first time hearing him say that. But okay, well, there you go. <laughs> you yeah. know. So, but she's not going anywhere. She's already said she's not going anywhere, even though he wants her to go somewhere. She's not. <laughs> um. So um. <sighs> <laughs> so then they talk about um janelle janelle talks about how like the history of the family's been well, they had a great history you know and they show these flashbacks and all these things and it was great but things have changed it was good but it isn't anymore and the difference is now cut deep seasons of life and all that um and cody talks about marriage to mary and how it was hard and then janelle came in and kind of diluted it Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was like and uh, was mary caustic you know was she not accepting janelle um were you in a relationship with someone you hated and then you bring someone else into it and then things get worse like um yeah i mean it this is the first time that i had heard out of cody's mouth that things were not like hunky dory for him and mary at the beginning i mean every couple you know goes through their right but you know honeymoon phase and then of course like reality sets in but it sounded from Cody that it was pretty toxic from the beginning. And I didn't know that. I didn't know like the severity of how bad their marriage was at the beginning. So to hear right. that and then to hear, okay, well, Janelle came in and then I'm like, oh, well, that's the first time I'm hearing that. Yeah. I'm not surprised, but. <laughs> so yeah, Janelle coming into the marriage. So like they're talking about this, you know, <laughs> Janelle talks about how confrontational and aggressive Mary was. I believe and it. I totally do too. I believe it anyway. But then after Christine was talking about Mary's just not a nice person and it's like, okay, yeah. And so they're, they're talking about like, you know, things about cleaning up the house and like, do you put oranges in the fridge or not? First which, of all, I wanted to ask you, do you, I do. I like my I oranges do not. cold. See, I do not put my, I know they don't in belong the in the fridge, but I like them. Cold. At least you acknowledge that they don't belong right. there, but you like yes. them cold. I get that because I yes. do sometimes put the, I put, I will on occasion put them in the fridge because I do want them cold. Yeah. On a certain time. Yes. So, but we all agree that they don't belong in the fridge. Correct. I'm, I'm betting that Mary wanted them outside of the fridge and then Janelle wanted them in. That's, that's my so? guess. Because mm -hmm. Mary seems to be like super OCD and by the book. Oh, she has to do everything exactly right. And if yeah. the book says don't put them in the fridge, she doesn't yeah. put them in the fridge. Okay. Um, You're not, I bet you she was the one that didn't want the certain laundry detergent. She probably wanted everything a certain way. Oranges don't belong in the fridge. I can just see it. Right. But, yeah. And bread no. and where, you, like how you, they do all that. And I stuff. put bread in the fridge. It lasts longer. We go through bread so fast that oh. <laughs> it doesn't have a chance. Yeah. It's just Kai and I. So, you know, it yeah. takes a while. Yeah. Um, do you put your peanut butter in the fridge? I do. The organic peanut butter, yes. I feel like a, the organic natural stuff you have to because it gets yeah. too liquidy otherwise. The regular stuff with all the chemicals and preservatives, <laughs> like I keep that in the ca the cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about your ketchup? Do you keep your ketchup in the fridge? Ketchup is disgusting. I don't own ketchup. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's that and blue cheese. Nope. Nope. Never. All right. Like blue cheese dressing or blue cheese the cheese? Blue cheese, all of the above. Anything okay. Blue okay. Yeah, dressing. Right. But um, yeah. But if I did have ketchup, it would go in the fridge. Okay. Even though I know it doesn't belong in the fridge. Oh, I put our we put ours in the fridge. Do you? Yeah, ours is all the those kinds of condiments go in the yeah. fridge. When in doubt, everything goes in the fridge. Why not? Yeah, exactly. I just kind of know I did. like part of the reason I don't put the 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 oranges in the fridge anymore is because I have a fruit basket out in the main kitchen area and if i put when i put fruit in the fridge even when i take it out of the i take it out of the bags i put it in cute little plastic containers so they're right there all you have to do is grab the container children do not eat fruit that's in the fridge apparently they don't see it they don't see it they don't whatever but if i have the dit like the big bowl mm -hmm. i have the bananas hanging from the top and i have all kinds i eat fruit all the time I yeah. will just grab my pear or grab an apple or whatever. If it's summer, you know, whatever's in, whatever's in season, I always have it full of stuff because that's what I munch on all day. And, um, but kids don't 
like, yeah, they won't go into the fridge for fruit if they're like looking for snacks, you know, <laughs> they don't, mm -hmm. but they will grab them if they're there. Makes sense. So, yeah. So that I, I try to get stuff that I don't have to refrigerate as much because like I, I, I do it every time. Like I like grapes. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many grapes I've thrown away because they get eaten like the first day and then they be, everybody forgets about them. Do you put them in like the mason jars? I yeah, put all I my like. I have these like plastic bins of different sizes that mm -hmm. I uh, just to, to keep things organized. Like I use them in the pantry and I use them in the fridge um, to try to keep like those kinds of things together. Like I have one that I keep my like protein shakes in, like the ready to drink protein shakes versus yeah. my like when I make a protein shake. Right. Um, I have, you know, that kind of thing we have, you know, I keep my, my lemons and limes in one like that because I'm always mm -hmm. grabbing those and you know I don't need to go into the other you know drawers or whatever that we you know so I don't yeah. know I, I have all these different bins and stuff so what I will do is I'll get like cherries or grapes or something like that you know and I wash them and I put them all in the the thing and I put them like at eye level in the fridge so that like you open the kids, you know, especially like during the summer or when they're home or in spring break or whatever, you know, they can open the fridge and be like, oh, OK, and just grab it. It's easy to grab. You know? Yeah. Still don't do it. Yeah. And I, I end up throwing them away. <laughs> I learned a little trick to put like wash them and put them in mason jars and seal okay. it like it, it, it make, makes them last a lot longer with the so, with the seal. Yeah. Okay. And um, I have like one of those soda, you know, like the what do you call them? organizers for sodas mm -hmm. um we have several of those as well yeah so like if you buy mason jars that are like this size that are soda size you can actually put them in that little soda sectional and it it saves space interesting so they roll like, like oh these blueberries i go to like oh, costco get, yeah like, we do we, we go yeah. through a lot of blueberries kaya every, eats like a, and just a crazy amount of blueberries every day everybody in this house about. eats everybody including the dogs love the blueberries uh-huh we get them for um the bearded dragon loves the blueberries nice um bluebies as we call them um <laughs> and the yeah and the kids like everybody will eat the blueberries but mm -hmm. um so those don't really yeah i mean and the, we go through a lot of those yeah, yeah. anyway but um, we digress but we digress <laughs> bet Mary's you didn't realize you're getting a home edit uh podcast i know right about organization <laughs> my current organization um is consisting of getting rid of shit <laughs> oh i look like hoarders right now i've got shit everywhere so i yeah i'm like i have these like boxes staged in different areas that are like the donation stuff and i'm trying to get the rest of my family because they, they like to complain about stuff like why do we have this where's this they're always asking me where things are before they've even looked but whatever yeah um, and it, they're always like, why do we have this? What's this for? And I'm like, am I in charge of, apparently I'm in charge of all the things in the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and so I'm trying to encourage them. I'm like, okay, well, no, I don't know why it's there. It's extra. Just get rid of it. We're getting rid of it. Right. We don't need 16 of these, whatever it is, like put them in the box, put it in the yeah. box. And so I'm trying to like do that as I'm doing 8 million other things, but yeah. uh, so my my living room looks as you know ADD as I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel you. Um. So anyway, Mary's really confrontational, aggressive. Um, I can see her being like passive aggressive too, based on just the interviews oh, and just and just what we've seen now, which I think is worse. I wouldn't. I'd rather somebody just verbalize what they have to say then be passive aggressive i don't put up with passive aggressive passive i don't deal aggressive with that bullshit. microaggressions are like the worst yeah absolutely the worst i hate that it's like don't know don't be a dick don't be three years old just like let's talk like adults yeah yeah <laughs> have a conversation hey dumbass i don't like it when you you try just tonight had our life mate putting his sodas in the soda containers in the fridge we have four of them four of the little rolling things there's two kinds of drinks in the fridge that he drinks. And there's two kinds that I drink. I have my cherry Dr. Pepper zero and I have my sparkling water. He has his seven up zero and he has his Dr. Pepper. He was using three out of the four of <laughs> the things that I was like, uh, 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 uh no, sir. <laughs> no, sorry. Come here, dumbass. Teaching yeah. time. <laughs> no, that's not how I handled it. But, um, yeah. So, you know, I had to, mm -hmm. had to regulate. You get two, I get two. 
Yeah. And they don't fit t- 12. They fit like nine. So you always end up with like, oh, if you're unloading, they're, it's so stupid. I get, I mean, the fridge wouldn't, it, they wouldn't work if they were any longer, but you know, so, so then mm-hmm. of course uh, we have the, you know, put the extras in a thing and uh, it's a whole, it's a whole thing. Yeah. Home edit over. <laughs> <laughs> you tell we've got cleaning and organizing on the mind. <laughs> if anybody is listening as a home organizer in Annapolis or surrounding areas, please hit me up. Yeah, <laughs> let's work out a deal. <laughs> yeah. Um, I need help getting rid of shit. <laughs> I can make the decision. I just need the, the help. Physically. Exactly. Yeah. 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 In a world where everyone was forced to leave the comfort of their homes to get their favorite drinks, a hero emerged. Its name was Drizzly, the number one app for alcohol delivery. And it allowed everyone to compare prices on the biggest selection of beer, wine, and spirits and get them delivered in under 60 minutes or scheduled up to two weeks in advance. No hassle, no headache, no plot holes. But that's not all. Drizzly even makes it easy to send the gift of alcohol to your friends and family because every occasion needs a hero and that hero is you. So if you want to spend more time streaming and take destiny into your own hands, download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com today. Dun, dun, dun. Like, yes, no, yes, no, no, no. Get rid of, get rid of, yep. get rid of, you know, I just need someone to come help me do the physical work of it. Mm-hmm. Cause then I get, I, uh, anyway, <laughs> it's back to Mary being confrontational and aggressive. Um, Janelle tells us that she moved out for a time. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't remember if we knew this or not. Like, I, I, it might be more recent for you, your rewatch, or, or the. Or your I don't watch. remember seeing that. But it, yeah, Suki, I think, was saying, like, we didn't know this before. And she's like, yeah. And um, it, Cody says that Janelle couldn't be with Christina and Mary any longer. But no, you know, it's not about Cody because it's never about Cody, right? He's yeah. never the fault problem. No, no. Nope. <laughs> and then Janelle's comment is, well, Cody remembers it in a way that works for him, but that's not how I remember it. That's not what happened. I wanted to stay in Wyoming. She did the way that she did it. She, she wasn't fed up with Christina and Mary and moved out to get rid of it. She probably, yeah, she wanted to stay in Wyoming. I do remember this, actually. I do. Yeah. And then she got a job and she was waiting for them to, I think, move it's been a while i mean not that long but a year is a long time <laughs> i <trying to> remember <laughs> vaguely i vaguely remember it yeah and and that's the kind of thing i'm talking about with janelle that i love how she just always comes in and she's like okay no you know because that's what we're thinking is that cody remembers it one way and he's not remembering it whatever and she comes in and she says that she recognizes it and she's able to articulate the bullshit and i love yeah. that about her yep I love that about her. Um, Let's then talk about Christine coming into the marriage. Per Cody, she asked if she could come. She was begging, begging to come in the marriage. (sighs) Now, we get back to this idea that they're all young. We have to remember they're all raised in a cult. And it's a cult. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um. The YouTube rabbit holes I'm going down now, having watched one Duggar thing and the things that I get turned on to <laughs> the start playing next. Are the, whoo, anyway. Oh man. Um the 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 polygamy documentaries that that or documentaries, whatever you want to call them, the, the shows. videos that show up um are really, really interesting. Um, but I'm learning about different kinds of cults and how many different little parts are there. Um, and then I ended up watching on Vice. I fell asleep to watching Vice's um, cults and extreme beliefs or something. Oh my God. Like, yeah. But in any case, Christine coming into the marriage. I think that uh, I could see her being excited. Like, oh, I love, you know, she sees this family that seems perfect. Cody, maybe she's attracted to him. Oh, this seems like it'd be a great fit. And, you know, Christine was like very bubbly and outgoing. So I could see mm-hmm. her enthusiasm that maybe he's in his narcissistic lens twisting it to seem like she was begging you know i don't i I doubt that she was begging 
But then again, you know, then he made the comment, well, her family was like royalty in the church and I shouldn't have basically said I shouldn't have married her based on solely like that and her position within the church and his ego. Is that why he married her? Because yeah. of who she was connected to? Yeah, he pretty He's much also, said it. Hasn't he sold it also as being like, I married her because as a, like a favor or was that Janelle's? what he said about his marriage to Janelle. I don't remember it being a favor. I don't remember. But, sorry, Charlie. Can you hear Charlie panting? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love me some Charlie. Um, But so, yeah, my point, you know, about them being raised in a cult, right? So, and they're really young when they get married. So what do they know what love is or what, how to, how to share a house and how to, you know, assert your, you know, the, the, the things they're arguing about are, you know, about oranges and, and dishes and things like that are things it's like, like your argue- college roommates. Exactly. <laughs> I was going to say my sophomore year when I lived in an apartment with three other girls was like the first time, holy shit, you know, all of that, you yeah. know, you had to deal with all of that arguments about uh, dishes and this and this, I mean. I'm still dealing with it because we have different, me and Head of Life may have different styles, right? So these people, they're like 19, 17, 18 years old. They, their life experience is limited to their life in growing up in this cult with all, with this complete dysfunction around them. And I don't care what you say, this is dysfunctional in any yeah. way, shape or form. There's got to be, there's no perfect, you know, not that any family's perfect, right. obviously, but this AUB up, up. <laughs> A ballistic united brethren cult you know but yeah certainly you know certainly dysfunctional so this is what they've grown up with this is their only like view on the world so if she will ask to join the marriage i can see why she would have right you know that would be completely completely expected and normal for somebody in her position because mm-hmm. you know when you watch all of these these um documentaries and stuff about polygamy and families and all this stuff is the the wife gets to choose right she's the one that always says oh i want to marry you right like i want or tells the prophet they want to marry you You know what i mean they try to make it about the woman all the time so if christine asked to join the marriage that falls perfectly in line with everything else that we learned about these fundamentalist cults Shame on Cody for, even though he was young, marrying somebody that he was not attracted to and didn't want to marry. Mm. It just sucks. It sucks. She yeah. wasted how many years? Well, I don't say wasted because obviously they have kids and like, you know, I'm sure she doesn't regret that, but it just sucks. She's never really been in love. I mean, true love. Yeah. You know? Well, that goes also back to our theory about uh, Cody and Robin and why Robin's the favorite you know because by the time he met Robin he was an adult who'd been married to these other three wives for 20 years mm-hmm. he's kind of learned what he likes and what he doesn't like which he it's didn't like know. dating it's like yeah. his first wives were like dates like, yeah. like you know and then he re- he met the real thing yeah and I mean the rest of us just we don't marry the first people we go on a date with <laughs> right <laughs> you know so yeah he fell in love with her you know and, and Christine hopefully you know she'll go meet him she'll go meet her the love of her life or whether that be another man like Cody keeps insisting oh yeah <laughs> this this so what does he say he always makes it about when she when Christine <clears throat> he he says cody says okay you know christine's a different person now um but then he goes on this litany of things that he's not accepted which like um her complaints about him but he can't accept his own be- i don't know he can't accept his own behavior he goes on this litany of things that she's done that he hasn't accepted but he can't accept that his own stuff right yeah like he's expecting her to own his shit i don't know He's Cody in his twisted words, but then he Mm -hmm. says, Christine has to make it about Cody because (laughs) Cody has to be a bad, a bad man, a bad guy so that new men will trust her Yeah, because why would they take a risk to date a woman who's left a good man? It's crazy. So she has to say he's a bad man in order for other men to trust her. 
<laughs> Where is he getting this? It, like, Inside his asshole. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It makes you think that he's overthinking and and trying to, you know, like you said, he's, he's just making up his own like story. He's to still fit his grasping own narrative. at anything that will be not his fault. He had to. It, they're blaming Christine for him not reconciling with Mary, which we all know is bullshit. Somehow he's got to make Christine the bad guy about everything. Which we all know that that's bullshit. He was never going to reconcile with Mary, but for of Christine. Course. Of course, but not. for Christine, come on. And here's the deal: if Christine would have broken up with him and said, "I'm, I don't want to be in this marriage because I, I'm not in love anymore," you know damn well he would have pushed her and instigated and instigated and just like made a, just made it awful for her and would have gotten like that would have not been a good enough answer for him. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because he said, right. well, if she just wanted to leave because it's loveless, then I could understand that. No, don't even say that, Cody, because you know that that's not the case. That's not the case. He no. says that because it's convenient for him. Exactly. And his being able to continually try to escape accountability for his role in any of this. And Christine, the thing is, even Christine's not even making it all about him. She knows that she's had her role in the quote-unquote breakdown of the marriage you know but yes cody she, she you know these things happen because cody was doing this and cody was doing that and that, i mean that's right what happens um so i mean yeah cody can be mad at christine but like be mad about the right things yes yeah. you know you're gonna go through that after a divorce but jesus and then he, i mean he goes on and on about he's never loved her anyway right but then when they talk about the early days of the marriages, and then he's like, he, you know, when it's convenient for him, he says, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, the marriage it's, was great. Oh, well, it's no, kind of like a, anyway. right. It's like a parent child relationship when a parent punishes a child because they're doing something, quote, bad. And the child is like, well, I hate you. Like they're reacting, you know, damn well. I mean, Cody's acting like a child. It's like yep. Christine saying, hey, accountability, you know, this, this, and this are why I'm leaving or whatever. Well, I hate you and you hate it. It's like, a child speaking to their parents i don't know yeah it's crazy yeah i mean he just he he cannot accept one iota of accountability for his own behavior yeah. and that anything that any of these other women are saying may actually be correct you know because he's got somebody like robin and he's got mary who yeah clearly can do no wrong i mean mary everything she does is wrong but she still stays around <laughs> but she worships him the way he wants to be worshipped. Robin yeah. worships him the way he wants to be worshipped. Yeah. Janelle and Christine no longer worship him the way he right. wants to be worshipped. He his says it himself. Don't worship him. Yeah. He says it himself with his, it's all ego, baby. I mean, that's what yeah. he talks about, about polygamy being all ego, right? He finally said that. That was the one thing of truth in the whole damn season. <laughs> yeah, admitted to. it was like the, right. the one thing we need to make shirts would that say what something about ego and baby. Oh, I don't ego know. Baby. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy um go to the broadcast.com for merch yeah um but that tiktok off track but that tiktok video that you sent me the of uh, mary and her like mm-hmm. selling oh my god let's talk about it talk about it talk yes about it. okay so you sent me this video and it was like you know mary selling like her lularoe or whatever and she it was like little cuts and snippets of just her interacting with i guess the people on her live whether it be instagram or tiktok live i think or it whatever. was tiktok but i'm not yeah. sure yeah and so i guess people were making comments and she was basically just being rude to some people some people deserve to be like yeah. you know blocked but other people asking questions about whether it be sizes or whatever and she's like um hello da, 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 did you not see or whatever i was just like she's just being like mean i'm like you expect <laughs> people you expect people to buy stuff from you and you're just giving she them an was attitude being nasty yes completely aggro totally nasty like and yes some people absolutely deserve the, the block and the right because they come on for the you know purpose of trolling i get it right right Um, absolutely but people would be asking legitimate questions and her answers were like well then don't buy any or okay Eh." 
and yeah. she she had this attitude in her voice, this edge to her voice. Mm-hmm. And she, oh my god, which made me think like if that's how she is on a live in front of thousands, I don't know when how she's trying running, to sell to, her right. shit. What do you think she's like at home behind closed doors? Right. Who knows? But I can see why the other sisters, sister wives, were like, no, she's mean or whatever. Yeah. Um. um I want to rewatch that now because that was just like, is this real life? <laughs> is this real life? Is this um, edited? I don't know um yeah she just <laughs> god uh, and i know like i know i've seen it with people like getting trolled and how awful some of the comments are but like you don't treat regular people that are asking legitimate questions i know mean. she's just like there was no no reason for her nastiness yeah um and um yeah so um okay so we were taught oh they were recapping the goodbye scene very very awkward goodbye scene right Mm -hmm. robin says that the physical division between the two sides was due to covid still do you believe that Uh, she really in her mind believes i really do think she believes that i don't know so then cody is also mad about janelle and christine's friendship and Janelle is like, well, we've been doing that work for a while. And either Cody didn't see it or he only saw it one way. Again, in yeah, whatever he's, way. He's that- mad when they're not friends. And then he's even madder when they when they start teaming up. And, well, yeah, they yeah. teamed up and they both left him. Like, yeah. yep. <laughs> I'd be mad too. Because then you have yep. to start realizing what's the common denominator here, guys. Yeah. It's me. Hi. I'm the problem. It's me. me. (laughs) Can Robin and Christine ever be friends? And Robin's like, it's all I want. And I want something real. Do you think that Robin actually has real friends? Like in the real world? Real friends? Yeah. Real friends. I can't. (laughs) Real real friends? Real. Real. I had to write it. I had to write it. R I L L. R I L L. Real, real friends. <laughs> that's how my friends and I, <laughs> Melissa, and Natasha, and I. That's how we can when we we're texting. We we'll uh-huh. use words that are supposed to be feeling or whatever, <laughs> and we'll say feeling. <laughs> <laughs> we use those all the time. I love like, it. Our conversations, like if somebody else were to try to read them, yeah, because they're so littered with ninety day isms uh-huh. and um sister wives isms like we say it we know what it means <laughs> but somebody mm-hmm. else tried to read it would be like what are these people talking about what? Are, are, wait she's sober yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, um robin talks about well she you know fakes fakes crying and they're they're taking away the family from her she feels like she's been cheated because she bought into the family and then the family ups and leaves Mm -hmm. the family part that she wanted to to marry into is is now gone and and i get that i you know that's that's not necessarily an inaccurate way to feel i mean inaccurate i mean like it's a completely reasonable way to feel i think you know because like in any marriage that ends or any relationship that ends, you know, you buy into it, you go into it with certain expectations expectations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then something changes. You know, I was expecting to be married and raising my kid and doing all these things with my then husband and things didn't work out that way. And yeah, they're, they're, (laughs) you know, you, you feeling cheated makes totally total sense. But then she's like, I'm Cody's whipping boy because I get blamed for everything. Yeah. His rules, his, this, his, that, you know, they blame me. And mm-hmm. I'm like, mm, yeah. <laughs> um, either way, they're like the one in the same. So it doesn't really matter which one it comes from. In yeah. my eyes, it's like they're one unit, right? Like, does it matter if it comes from her or him? Any married couple that is, with any reasonable degree of closeness is going to have like mutual kinds of, you know, it kind of both of us, you know, or, mm-hmm. or I mean, sometimes some things are all my idea and not <laughs> and yeah. wife mates, and he makes that perfectly clear. He is like, I wanted nothing to do with this. Mm-hmm. Um, but she gets blamed for everything. And is that reasonable? You know, I don't care. 
Yeah. I'm blaming Robin, I'm blaming Cody. If I'm blaming Cody, I'm also blaming Robin. They're a unit in my eyes. Yeah. Um, and then a little in a and this is right as this the episode was ending. So it'll be, you know, the cliffhanger that we were left on Cody and Robin's relationship. Um, Cody's like, I'm not gonna talk about Robin. Yeah. Which I don't know why he gave so he had such an attitude and was like looking at his watch and stuff. I'm like, why are we doing this? Like you're on a tell all. I don't understand. And this is where I'm gonna call editing, is we mm-hmm. don't know the context of that. I bet you there was another question she asked, or there was more to it. Yeah. And then well, they edited that. First of all, I mean, they ended the episode with it. So it was like next time, you know, and, and all of that is just cuts. They're not put together and they're put together in a way that's going to make us want to c- watch it. You know, oh, what are they saying? Why is he saying that? Oh my God. Mary left Cody, you know, all of that stuff. So it's going to be cut and spliced in a way that is going to make us want to tune in. And again, context, we don't know, well, we don't know the original context before editing. And then we don't know the context of what the bigger picture of what they're going to show next week. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited because this episode is kind of meh to me, but yeah. Um, I'm hoping we get some good information next week, like more information. Yeah. Because there, there, there really wasn't a lot. I mean, yeah. I'm like going back through my notes here and I'm like, no, got that. The, no. There was one time actually during this episode where they show Christine watching Mary talk about that whole fight outside. And I feel like Christine was expecting Mary to be like, oh yeah, I understand. Like where, you know, she's coming from or whatever. But no, she's like, Cody was holding that in. And and then, you know, she goes on to say like, well, and I'm glad he said it. And I'm like, you're such a bitch. Mm-hmm. You're such a bitch. Mm-hmm. I was just like, it's like Christine, uh, like, well, see what I mean? I mean, yeah, she's just like, okay, <laughs> you know, um, you guys are making my point for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that irked me. I yeah, that part. Yeah. Um. God, Mary. Mm. Um. <laughs> she gets more and more toxic. Like the further, yeah. like we go on, and to think, once upon a time, I really liked her. I felt sorry for her mm-hmm. a while ago. Now I don't. I remember watching the season where Robin was giving birth to Solomon, I believe it was the first one. And she told Mary that she'd be a Mary's surrogate for her. Yeah. Because Mary was all, you know, I can't have any, you know, she, cause right. she only had the one kid. And, um, and, and I was like, Oh, that's really sweet. Maybe I do like Robin after all. Maybe I do like Robin. And Mary. That's sweet yeah no yeah (laughs) nope yeah yeah so that i I mean yeah there wasn't there wasn't a ton there was a lot of replaying past scenes i felt a little 90 day-ish in that regard (laughs) yeah i was like i feel like i'm just watching the last two episodes that i just saw rather than the tell-all but yeah um or quick. one-on-one, whatever they're calling it. Yeah, the one-on-ones. Quick change of subject. They got the guy who they believe is the Idaho college student murderer. Yes, that is absolutely insane. This story is going to be bananas. And yeah. there are multiple reasons why. Because this, I mean, the first of all, the murders themselves, that whole thing that it was brutal and it was crazy, right? We didn't get a lot of information, but what we did get seemed like it was pretty, pretty violent, right? And and it was just the the, the police department not releasing a lot of information, you know, about which which made me think, okay, well they they know stuff, right? They They're do, not yeah. Anything, so they were on to something, but, right? You know, it turns out they they were, um, but they so they they got this guy. Um, what they have said in press conferences it was based on forensic DNA evidence. And they used the the family genealogy aspect to get to him, which I thought was really interesting. They showed, I love showed that I they showed this like little blurb of like the woman, the the CC who does like a lot. She's of in these. everything. She's, she's in every single yeah crime. You know, yeah investigation. Doing she's amazing. all the genetic genealogy stuff. Yeah, I love watching her explain how she mm-hmm. goes and does all that stuff. It's, it's awesome. She was involved somehow um, and for some reason or whatever. And then you, so you have that alone, which is 
okay, there's there's a lot happening that we don't know about because they're not releasing every, yeah. anything. And there's obviously going to be a lot of stuff. And so that alone was making it interesting to me. Then we find out CC and genetic genealogy is involved. I'm like, oh, holy shit, that's all really good. And then they catch this guy who's a freaking criminology PhD student. Which obviously he is a terrible person and a terrible student because he left his DNA and wasn't like, I'm like, you're an idiot. Well, but- this is what's funny. His defense attorney from his his court appointed public defender in Pennsylvania where he was arrested has said, he says that he will be exonerated. He looks forward to it. So like, okay, yeah, right. which tells me, I don't know, the, the my gut, the sense I get from all that is that he thinks he was so smart like right. oh this there's no dna they couldn't have gotten how did they you know i'm going to be yeah. able to counter their dna evidence because i because you know he thinks in his head that he there's like a scale of narcissism and like cody's on one side and this killer is on the other so i'm not comparing the two in the sense because obviously like one is an absolute terrible horrible cody's murder. Not a murderer <laughs> that we know right of. <laughs> right but there's like the spectrum of narcissism and obviously his ego i mean the guy was so dumb he started like um a, um an anonymous survey online right. about he was asking the criminal questions on reddit yeah. like That's you don't think that around. that can be tracked like things will be found out one way or another right like so i don't know there's like so many aspects to this that i can see the dateline episode in my head yeah you know we got to cover it eventually eventually i mean as yeah that's part of why i'm talking about it now is like i wasn't really talking about it before because there wasn't a lot to talk about somebody asked me about it on new year's eve and that was like just when this guy had been arrested so there hadn't been a lot of information about it and then so there still isn't a lot but they said you know they they basically alluded to the fact that there's a shit ton of forensic evidence yeah and that they've done some really like but i'll be honest it's terrifying to me because if he could walk into a house with how many people were in that house he murdered four people we don't know what happened though so he but he had to have known that they were was it a party did he know how did he know these people did they know i don't know did he know these people we don't know any of that information yet it's it's absolutely horrifying to think like I think about Kaya going to college and like you know your son is in Uh college and to think that they could just be studying and having fun and living their lives and just be innocently murdered for absolutely no reason I know is terrifying to me because you do there are so many random people around even if they knew this guy like if it was like like they maybe knew of the guy like Mm -hmm. why was he in the house did he break in like what's the motive but well yeah but also just like i mean i remember when i lived in the apartments the same ones that i learned to Mm -hmm. argue about dishes and oranges when yeah um you know, there was always people in and out of all of the apartments because we all knew each other. It was a bunch of friends of yeah. us from the year before. We all got apartments right near each other. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, there and there's four people that lived in each apartment and then they all have friends and you never know. You right. know people are just coming and going all the time at all hours. Yeah. I like, mean, I had a peeping Tom in college. Um, I lived on the first floor of an apartment by myself. Gee, oh, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um. My bed was like, there's the window. My bed was in front of the window and I had the blinds closed, of course, but I'm laying in bed and somebody's tapping on my window, even though the blinds are closed. And at first I thought, oh, it's a squirrel or I don't know, a bird. I don't know. But then it was like louder and it was somebody outside. So of course I do what you're not supposed to do. I get mad and I go out my front door <gasps> oh, to the side. Who's there? Don't blah, do blah, blah. that. I know it was dumb. Um, and then I was like, well, maybe it was a fluke. Like, you, you know, you try to like rationalize whatever. Cause I didn't see anybody. Maybe it was and then it foot. happened again. And then right. Big, foot. big feet. <laughs> right. So it happened again. So I'm texting, I was in the fire department at the time. So I'm texting my police friends and they were like, my friend Evan was like, oh my God. Yeah. There is a peeping Tom. We've been trying to catch him in your neighborhood. Like, or not your neighborhood, but like yeah. around. Uh-huh. And so we'll send a car and I had somebody parked out like in, you know, doing rounds, whatever, mm-hmm. like in my neighborhood, I never saw him again. Well, I, didn't, I never actually saw the guy. But my point is, it's terrifying being a young female or not even female, doesn't matter. Mm, yeah. And just knowing that you're vulnerable and that there are creepers out there. But it's true. And women awful. are more vulnerable than men. Yeah. Not that the men aren't vulnerable and, and all that. Don't, not all men, me. Yeah. Right, <laughs> I'm right, very right, right, triggered right. these days by 
mediocre middle-aged white men so like don't <laughs> all not all men at me right now <laughs> um yeah it's probably because i watch too much politics on you know, <laughs> tv so i'm getting an over overload of <laughs> middle-aged white men anyway yeah. i'm sorry <laughs> sorry for what <laughs> <laughs> um in any case <laughs> yeah um I completely forgot what I was going to say. Anyway, I don't know. We yeah, will, yeah, we'll crazy. continue to follow the story. Um, we'll try to I'll do, you know, we could try to follow it as it goes and maybe do regular updates when like something happens, there's a major news event. Maybe we'll do like maybe an organized thing. Maybe I'll put some notes together on it. Um, and then, um, yeah, there's another case out of Boston that our friend wants us to look at. Um mm-hmm. And uh, that might be really cool too. So um, in any case, we'll um, try to keep you updated. Um, Thanks for tuning in and we'll be back with another episode after the next tell all. Happy new year. Happy new year. Um, Go to the fraudcast.com. Check out our Facebook group, check out our merch, check out our Instagrams. Share with a friend. If you could send your friend, like if everybody just sends their friend, the link to the show, just one friend, the link. Yeah. It would help. Yeah, that'd be great. We'd love it. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it's late. It's late on what day of the week? Is it Wednesday? Uh, yeah, it is. Oh, there's some new Doctor Now I got to watch. It's oh, out no. now? Well, it's their new um, Where Are They Now Ooh. episodes every Wednesday. And then the new season of the regular episodes are going to be in starting february maybe okay i'm not sure but right now they're doing new like where are they now update episodes but they're new of old people of people we've seen before on their original journeys it's like the next step okay um they're those are are successful i do bingo with those with the ladies so um i think actually we're gonna watch it tomorrow because it's late it's like 9 30 and we're old (laughs) 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 um in any case, um, I think that's all we got. So talk to you later. Bye.